Hi everyone, and welcome to the Ari Writer channel. My name is Ari, and today we're going to be talking about the dimensions. Now, there's so many ways to describe the dimensions, and I did a lot of research for this video, and a lot of sources have led me to view the dimensions in so many different ways that don't necessarily conflict with each other, but I think that they add on to each other and enhance our idea of what each dimension truly means. So, we can start from the most basic dimension, which is essentially dimension zero. Now, for a while, I used to think this was the true first dimension, especially in terms of philosophy. And in terms of mathematics, the zero dimension is essentially a location or a point. It doesn't really have any size. It just has some kind of location in relation to other locations. And so this location, the zero dimension, is represented by a point, as like I said. And you can see the illustration that I wrote here. I actually used my little journal here, and I started to write down all the different dimensions in terms of how they essentially look according to philosophy mixed with mathematics. So we're going to get into that right now. The next dimension is the first dimension, of course, and this is considered a line. And so in many interpretations, the first dimension essentially is two locations connected to one another with some kind of relation to each other. And that relationship is the line itself. And so that's the first dimension. Just so you all know, all dimensions are included within each other. So the zero dimension is part of the first dimension. The first dimension does not necessarily include other dimensions after it. So second, third, and fourth are not inside the first. Only smaller dimensions, such as the zero and first dimension, are in the second dimension. So the second dimension is actually essentially, in its most basic form, three lines connected together to form a triangle. And this is a flat plane, and so hence we have the two-dimensional plane, and this is where we can draw on top of it, and we can create two-dimensional figures and two-dimensional drawings, and painting is a great example of this. There is a bit of depth to some of these things, but not really. So just consider the x and y coordinate system the second dimension. Now, we can also look at the dimensions in an exponential way, that each new dimension is doubling the amount of points that the pre previous dimension has. This is one of these odd interpretations that I found that I actually really, really like, because the mathematical sense of dimensions does allow us to go and use the simplest forms. But if we keep doubling the points, we actually do get dimensions that are similar to the mathematical and in some ways similar to the philosophical interpretations of the dimensions. So you could also say that not only is it a triangle, but it could also be a flat square, which is, you know, we have two points for the first dimension for the line. So now we have four points for the flat square. Each corner of the square is a location or a point. So that's the second dimension. The third dimension is basically what we currently live in this is the highest dimension that we can currently prove and experience. And so the third dimension in its simplest form is a bunch of pyramids. Now, we could also double the amount of points in the second dimension and make it eight points. Once we do this, we get a cube. And so a cube also works, but a pyramid is a little bit simpler. And the third dimension basically includes the z-axis. We have x, we have y, sometimes x and y are actually reversed, so actually this is x, <laughs> this is y, typically. And then z is essentially depth, which typically is represented going this way, but of course depth really just means up or down. Um, if we look at x and y um, in terms of the floor below us, then we could go forward, we could go backwards, we can go left, we can go right, on this two-dimensional plane, 360 degrees. But then we can jump and then we can crouch, and that's the Z dimension. And our height, for example, I'm five foot seven. that height factors into the Z uh, portion, which is part of the third dimension, and what makes the third dimension very special. So we live in the third dimension, but we access the fourth dimension quite frequently, and it affects us in many ways. The fourth dimension is an interesting one. Now, if we're inside of all other dimensions, but we can't really perceive them, then the fourth one is the closest one that we can kind of perceive and understand and quantify. The fourth dimension, according to a lot of interpretations, represents time. Duration is another way to define time. And so with time in mind, the fourth dimension is very interesting. For a long time, philosophically, I believe that the fourth dimension allowed any being 
to basically do anything in one single possibility. So right now we're in a possibility. We have time flowing. We have certain events that are happening that have happened in this possibility. We can't really have duplicate events happening at the same time. We can't have overlapping events with the same person. Each person has their own time frame and their own actions in this set of history, so to speak. And therefore, fourth dimensional beings can basically manipulate time in a way and they can also somewhat as a result do almost anything so in a way we could theorize that fourth dimensional beings could be beings of higher power so some of the gods mentioned in the old testament the new testament the bible overall other um religious books and basically these higher beings so to speak that we can't really see but somehow we have stories of and they seem to have affected our history and affected uh, humankind for thousands of years. They seem to have created humans according to some of the stories. Therefore, my theory is that fourth dimensional beings are essentially deities and or gods. And so that's what it seems like they are. But at the same time, if we look at it just mathematically, the fourth dimension is just time. It's not something to really um, dwell too deep into. And what's really interesting is that our ideas bridge the gap between the third and the fourth dimension because an idea is a concept of something but we can think of anything so if we can think of anything we can't necessarily do anything but at least we can think of anything and that i think is a fourth dimensional concept the fact that we have these ideas and that allows us to bridge that gap and perhaps transcend to another dimension i think in a um, intellectual sense we can. I don't think physically we're truly able to, but we could. And there are some people that claim to have been able to uh, do this through astral projection and other concepts and ideas and visualizations and experiences that seem a little bit otherworldly and seem like, you know, they do have these extra powers. So now the next dimensions are interesting. We can basically theorize about them, but we can't quite exactly prove what they are. So according to math, the fifth dimension is where we now have another possibility that seems to parallel our history and our possibility. This is where the idea of parallel universes comes to mind. So as you can see by the symbol, I kind of drew a Venn diagram in which the universes share certain characteristics, but there's deviations and differences between them. So quite interesting how these parallel universes work. It's another aspect of time and it's quantified. And remember, you can always, if you want to, just double the amount of locations. So we go from cube to, I forgot to mention this for the fourth dimension, a tesseract, which is a cube within a cube. And that cube can essentially move into itself, hence forming a circular pattern. So interestingly enough, the tesseract and basically a sphere in some ways do represent the fourth dimension, although a sphere is actually a third dimensional object. But the fact that something is moving inside of it is where that fourth dimensional concept comes to mind. The fact that the movement and the duration is occurring, that's a fourth dimensional concept. That is what the fourth dimension really means. So the fifth dimension, you could say, it are two tesseracts moving within each other and or close to each other. So obviously there's a lot of interpretation there we can't quite prove it according to math and according to quantification we can go beyond so it's quite interesting how that works and then the last dimension that i'm really going to talk about because the other ones are very theoretical and they eventually end up in a loop but i'll talk about that in just a second the last dimension is the sixth dimension and this dimension is very interesting because this dimension basically implies that everything that is happening all at once. So the way that I represented it is I just took my pencil and I just started drawing in a bunch of random ways, drawing from the center of something and kind of expanding out a little bit. And basically it's all random. It's all happening at once. It's something that we in um, our dimension cannot really fathom. It's too complex to fathom everything happening at once. It doesn't really make any sense. Hence the philosophical concept, I think for me, is very, very interesting to consider. The fact that we could have a possibility, another possibility that mirrors ours, and then once you exponentially go beyond that, it's just every single possible thing that could happen, you know, is an option in this dimension. So this is where the realm of ideas and possibilities happen, and within the sixth dimension, we are one little blip of one set of possibilities out of multiple parallel universes and multiple different possibilities. Imagine if all the actions that we as humans made were slightly different from one human to another, 
the possibilities you could say are nearly infinite. So quite interesting, quite incredible how that works. So beyond that, the dimensions continue to quantify themselves to the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th. Apparently there is 11th as well. And there really isn't anything beyond that because once you go higher and higher in the dimensions, you do what you did in the 6th dimension because you basically scribble down every possibility happening all at once. The seventh one is doubling that, and then exponentially doubling that for the eighth one, etc., etc., etc. So once you continue doing that, what happens? When you keep on drawing and drawing and drawing, and you're basically doing the same thing and having all of those possibilities happening all at once, in a way, the exact opposite of that is a location or a dot. And if you look closely at a dot and you zoom in on that dot, that dot will have multiple little lines that created it and maybe a couple of gaps in between. And so that's the interesting part about the dimensions. It's a loop where you start with the lower dimensions from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then when you get back to 11 and then essentially 12, 12 and 0 are basically the same thing. That's why there isn't a 12th dimension according to the research I found. Uh, there's 11 mathematical ones, I believe, and obviously with math you can go beyond and you can start to quantify things a little bit. Philosophically, there are six that I think that we can kind of have a good grasp of, and beyond that we can only speculate. And so it's so interesting how the dimensions work, and that there's interesting ways of actually labeling them and talking about them. For example, the zero dimension basically is just a point it has no actual dimension the first dimension is the first time that we see a line being formed the second dimension is a split from that line to something else which is interesting the third dimension is folding that split folding that flat plane onto itself so if you take a flat piece of paper such as my hand right here and then you fold it in on itself you've now created the third dimension, so that's pretty cool. The fourth dimension is the second interpretation of another line, its duration of time, from when we're born to when we pass away, for example. So it's so interesting. And the fifth dimension, then again, is a split, because we have that duration, we have that movement of ideas and concepts going on with the tesseract in the fourth dimension, and then we just split it in two, but they're still kind of touching and connected to each other in some ways. Who knows? They may share certain characteristics, but you know, we could be acting in different ways in both those parallel universes. And so on and so forth. It seems like we're going in a pattern between, basically in this order, lines, splits, and folds. And it does it again. The fourth dimension is a line, the fifth dimension is a split, and the sixth dimension you could say is a fold. We're taking that fifth dimensional concept of two parallel universes, and then we're just mixing them, mixing them into each other. So it's very, very interesting, and it keeps doing that over and over again as you go on through the dimensions, except that the tenth one seems like it's a point, and then the eleventh one could just be a point as well. It's very, very hard to quantify at this point because we don't really exist in those dimensions and live in those dimensions, but it's very, very interesting. So lots to learn about the dimensions. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my illustrations and my little descriptions of how the dimensions work. And it's interesting to consider what they mean and what they mean for us as a whole in terms of what is life, who we are, and what is our purpose, so to speak. And I think that once we understand the dimensions, we can then say, you know what, our purpose could be quantified to become something interesting that isn't just a higher powers purpose or a generic purpose. It could be mathematical. And then that math could be used to fuel our philosophy as to why we're alive. For example, if God is a fourth dimensional being, that would mean that as third dimensional beings, we're probably portions that God split himself up into and basically put us into one possibility just to see what would happen. Maybe it's a test, because if God is everywhere and experienced everything, that's how that works, perhaps. <laughs> I'm not very religious, but I am very spiritual. And I think that when it comes to the math and the science behind this, it could be interesting to explain what is the purpose of life. And for me, my purpose is, and I think our purpose is, to communicate with each other and work with each other in order to help each other improve. And therefore, we can create more things. We can create more ideas and discoveries and inventions, make our lives better, give each other more wisdom, and help each other through tough situations. And I think that that is what a fourth dimensional God would want. He would want us all to work together to kind of become one thing again, and also to transcend the power of one human that can't just do anything, we can only think of certain things, but together 
I mean, with a team of people, you can do so much. You've seen it in civilizations, and you've seen it in the way that people can work together on certain projects and to really help our world. So that's part of the reason why I wanted to talk about dimensions and to fuel the conversation. So let me know what you guys think in the comments, and you can always email me as well. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.